bij Topnames. Iedere dinsdagavond zenden we uit en we doen dat vandaag met Susanne Tarkovsky. Susanne, you're from BitNation. Uh, what does BitNation do? BitNation is the world's first virtual nation offering real governance services. So we're powered by the Bitcoin blockchain technology and we do everything from security to insurance, etc. Uh, through using the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin technology. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a lot of things in, in, in one, <laughs> sen one, one sentence. Um, good, good 20 seconds. Yeah. 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 Good by the way. yeah I, I, I still need to refine my elevator pitch, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but not a longer version, yeah. because yeah. a lot of people won't understand it. I mean, uh, governmental services or, uh, you know, all kind of financial and, and services through the blockchain. I mean, how does that work? Right, so basically let's look at what the definition of a government and a nation is first, right? So a nation is a community of people, like-minded individuals who share common values or culture, etc. And a government is an entity providing governance services. A nation state is a entity providing governance services through extorting people for money to pay for those services. We don't do that, we are a virtual nation, so we don't extort anyone. Uh, we just provide better and cheaper services on a free market. And if people want to pay for them, they pay for them. And if they don't want them, they don't buy them, uh, So, which we think is ethical. So what we're trying to do is basically uh, provide better and cheaper services through using the blockchain technology to basically make nation states irrelevant, deaf by irrelevance. But that's more of a, a, a political right. uh, yeah, point yeah, yeah. You, you, or a stand you take. Yes. I mean, in practical terms, what, what can I do <clears throat> as a person with your service? So the essence of the service is basically a blockchain jurisdiction, right? So the most important service a government can provide is law and order, security, uh, securing people's personal property, people's assets, etc. Um, and now more and more assets are becoming digital, right? And you can make, for instance, your land title can be digital, a car can be tokenized into a digital token that you can trade online, you can attach value. Bitcoin is basically the internet of value. It's a lot more than just a currency, right? So you can tokenize everything to represent a value and you can trade that between consenting individuals uh, through what we call smart contracts. Uh, which is basically, which makes the blockchain into a sovereign jurisdiction where all code is automatically executed. So, um, okay, let me take a simple example, right? Let's say you want to sell a car to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have a Honda Civic. Yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is true, no, actually. No, no, no. You have no car. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I've always wanted to have a Honda Civic. Perfect. It was in yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and I agree to pay one Bitcoin for it. So we open up a chat window, right? And you say, okay, so this car uh, is going to cost, you know, so you say this car and that car gets automatically tokenized, right? Just by you typing it into the chat. And I say, okay, well, I agree to pay one Bitcoin and then a multi-sig escrow, multi-signature escrow is automatically created, which we all have the key to. And to release both the tokenized car and the funds, we all need to agree that it has been properly done, right? Then we're going to choose our own code of law. You know, maybe you say, oh, well, uh, you know, I recently converted to Islam and I want to use Sharia law, you know. Well, and maybe I say, well, you know, from a business perspective, uh, British common law is definitely superior. Uh, and then we agree on British common law, for instance, right? So we just drag and drop that into, into the conversation. Uh, and then we choose on our arbitrator, which is secured by the reputation system, the ID and reputation system. And we say, okay, this guy doesn't have a law degree, for instance, but he is very good with, uh, you know, car, car, he was a former car dealer, you know, and he's also reasonably priced, right? So, so we would choose him uh, to settle our dispute in case a dispute arises. And then we put in a couple of witnesses, then we all sign off with our digital signatures, which feeds into our own reputation system. And then um, in case there is a problem, uh, you know, we have everything in place, right? Uh, exe uh, automatically executable contract uh, that is governed by the blockchain, a code of law, an arbitrator, witnesses, and as the last resort, if nothing else works, 
we have uh, the reputation system to fall back on because if you just totally screw me over, you know, the car just doesn't exist, uh, then I will just give you a really bad rating and nobody will want to do business with you again, you know? So instead of going to jail, you just like get out of business, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, very much like eBay okay, or... So, so, so far so good, sounds like yeah. a good system, but is, is, are these kind of contracts recognized by courts? In, for example, the, the, the Netherlands, if, if there is a problem, are you, the only thing you can do is solve it through the blockchain itself? No, contracts are recognized by courts. I mean, even if you, if you sell a car to me, for instance, and we make a contract, even if we make it in some even countries ver paper, verbally, even, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 or by email or whatever, that's yeah. recognized by courts, right? Yeah. Agreements are recognized, and having it in a mutable public ledger that is distributed amongst hundreds of thousands of computers around the world, the mm -hmm. blockchain is obviously a much stronger proof than, okay, let's that, say... That, that's true for buying and selling cars or right. other agreements, but if you and I agree right now mm -hmm. verbally to get married, uh -huh. uh, that's not recognized by Dutch law. You have to go uh, to the, uh, uh, the local government, you have to go well, to a notary service, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we are not married if we agree to be married. Well, I wouldn't agree to start with, but that's another story. Well, uh, he's, a, he, he's, a, he's a nice guy, but yeah. maybe maybe not to marry, I don't know. Well, I'm already married, and it's not allowed. Yeah. In. <laughs> well, on the blockchain, you can have polygamous marriage. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyways. No, but for, uh, you know, as, uh, let's give it as an example that for right. a lot of transactions, you have to go in most countries to a recognized... No, or so the way the service or the government well, or blah, blah, blah. well, I think uh, marriage is a really interesting example. We have actually done the first blockchain marriage in the world, mm -hmm. and that's why I asked. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've done two actually. Um, the last one was really very romantic. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, so the way it works is that when you get married, you do a contract, right, saying like. In case of divorce, this belongs to me, this belongs to you, we're going to share this asset, you know, this goes to the kid or the dog or whatever, right? It's basically to protect your own asset. So if you get married on the blockchain and you want to take that uh, contract to deal with it in a nation state court, let's say, then it works kind of like a prenup agreement, which is basically what a marriage contract is, right? So yeah, you can get married on the blockchain. Yeah, but the, the only thing is that, that your marriage will not be recognized by the, the country you live in. Well, yeah, but, you know, the only reason you would want it recognized by the country you live in, the contract is recognized. You know, the agreement that you have between each other mm -hmm. is recognized, right? Yeah, but it's only uh, so, an agreement uh, uh, right. about what it's, you say it's, about it's, assets. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but the only reason you would want to have your marriage recognized is either in case you're trying to apply for a citizenship in another country of your whatever partner, or if you uh, want to get like, I don't know, like uh, some countries gives like tax cuts, tax breaks or whatever yeah. to married couples. Yeah. So, but if you don't care about those things, I mean, those are really the only two things I can see why people would want, you know, nation state recognition for it, uh, you know then, yeah, then that's pretty much irrelevant, frankly. Yeah, so it's basically, <laughs> like, it's, a system, yeah. <laughs> it's basically a system you're working on where you can organize everything you want to organize, every single type of contract, as long as you don't care about the official structures, the nation state, your local government, you can do anything on your platform. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think, you know, a lot of people who are in BitNation and a lot of people, uh, like, in our world, right, are kind of digital nomads. Even if we're not nomads, even if we don't actually move anywhere, you know, uh, we still kind of live online, we work online, like all our interactions are online, um, for better or for worse, <laughs> probably. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we kind of live in cyberspace, right? So, you know, I don't, you know, okay, I use, like, I walk on the street, you know, the roads, uh, and I use airports, I use my passport, but that's really the only time I ever interact with governments. I, you know, like a lot of people have just opted out completely, right? Mm -hmm. And when now that we see with like the refugee crisis, for instance, Schengen is closing down more and more. It's getting harder to actually move physically, right? And government surveillance is increasing, you know, it's getting 
more important to be able to exit in the digital realm. And with cryptographic tools, we have the ability for the first time to do that in a efficient manner. Like, I mean, of course, encrypted communications have been ar around for a long time, but now it's getting user friendly. And with the blockchain, you can do so much more than just communication and money. You can mm. also do contracts. Uh, yeah, but it's also a very uh, over idealistic view. I mean, there's also a viewer asking it, uh, you know, you abandon government, uh, replace money by blockchain and government by blockchain, and it all will be fine. You know, refugee crisis <laughs> solved, everything, all problems in the world are solved, and of course that's not the case. Well, no, I mean, I don't think it's a silver bullet, nothing is, right? But I think if but we why get... why is it so important then? Well, I think if we get rid of the nation state, we get rid of the biggest monopoly, oligopoly on violence, actually. I mean, there are only 210 nation states in the world, and they keep people geographic prisoners mm. just because but they were... But then who is going to organize the security services today in Brussels? Who is going to organize well, well, uh, well, uh, the, the refugee uh, camps in Greece? Who is going to organize uh, that kind of stuff? Uh, well, you know, I mean, the government is not a magical entity. No, the, the government is a group of people doing things, you know. It's it's nothing that gives them a special, you know, divine power to provide those services, right? The only thing that sets them apart from another group of people providing services, uh, you know, like a company or a volunteer organization, whichever, is the fact that they control a geographical area and force people to pay for their services with the implied threat of violence uh, for doing it. So you can do the exact same services, but without the implied threat of violence. But isn't that a very simplistic negative view on a government? That, that people... Well, I, I don't see why you should have a positive view of a government. I mean, it is a monopoly on violence. But what, what exactly do you mean? When is our government in our country threatening us with violence? All, all the time. Like, if I don't pay taxes, you know, a police officer will come knock at my door and say, we're going to take your private property away from you, and if you don't agree, I have a gun at yeah. my hip, and I'm ready to take you into a cage, put yeah. you into a cage, jail, right? Okay, so, 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 yeah, that is the implied threat of violence, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but is it, but so, so, so where... <coughs> um, but so say if 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 uh, the Bit Nation or the, if, if we have a, a different uh, system in place, um, how will it solve problems like this? For example, if uh, you you could say um, um, uh, paying taxes is is a sort of a contract. Yeah, of course, of course, it's it's contract. Uh, uh, one sided contract. One sided contract, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, but it's. Uh, well, uh, do you mean the social contract? Well, well, show it to yeah. me. I never seen that contract. You know, I never signed no. it. No, no, but say, okay. <laughs> say, say we don't have a go we, we we don't have the government anymore, <coughs> and, and and we have, have have a blockchain where we um, where we organize all um, uh, agreements, uh, uh, right. uh, so to say. Yeah. So what can't the blockchain um, uh, uh, arrange? Or where, do we have enough uh, when we have the blockchain to solve all these things? Because is is uh, life well, is life only uh, uh, agreements? Um, no, I, but I think agreements is a fundamental part of yeah. society, right? Yeah. Uh, and security, that's also, I mean, agreements are part of security in the sense of securing your assets, right? Uh, but there are a lot of things that can be solved through the blockchain, and we don't only work with the blockchain either. We work with a lot of non-blockchain technologies as well, like uh, drones, uh, rockets, artificial intelligence, um, and other technologies, right? And other very low-tech technologies as well, uh, like for instance um, <clears throat> uh, SMS, you know, for social organizations, etc. Um, so yeah, no, I'm not saying again. The blockchain is a little bit overhyped, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So it's not the silver bullet solution to everything, but it is an extraordinary technology. I think it's uh, it's a technological revolution at the same scale as <laughs> internet was. Have people uh, uh, been talking too much about, uh, uh, has, has Bitcoin been bad for the blockchain? No, God, no. I hate when people say that. Yeah. You know, that, that is, uh, I mean, no. So Bitcoin is the first application of the blockchain technology and it has been massively successful. It has millions of users <laughs> around the world. 
Uh, it's stable. It has never been hacked. The price is skyrocketing, you know. I mean, now it's like $410 or something today, I think. Imagine that from starting from scratch, from zero, seven years ago, right? And not being backed by guns like fiat money is or by gold, let's say, or something mm -hmm. else. Uh, I mean, I think that's an extraordinary achievement. And it has really helped a lot of people, a lot of unbanked people around the world who can't access the global financial system. So people who say that are simply ignorant assholes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so no, absolutely not. Yeah. Bitcoin is fantastic. I will always mm. love Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. What, what, also, <laughs> what I think uh, makes the uh, discussion a little bit difficult because I completely agree that the blockchain is an incredible yeah. you know, development, very promising, and is able to mm. solve a lot of uh, problems we have. But you know, if you put it to the extreme and you, you immediately say in one <coughs> sentence, the blockchain is fantastic, fantastic, and every government is a, a violence threatening uh, danger to humanity. Well, they uh, the are, nation. Yeah, but then well, you, you connect things in one argument that makes the discussion so difficult. Why don't we use the blockchain uh, to solve uh, uh, problems we all have uh, and not ignore you know, that we that there are other things than contracts in life and, and cultural things, political yeah, things. But, but we're That's working. a fact of life. But, but you know, uh, as I said, like, we're not only working I mean, with the blockchain technology, right? Like, a lot of the stuff we're providing has nothing to do with the blockchain. Like, um, for instance, now we're working to integrate one security application uh, that is cell phone based, that has nothing to do with the blockchain, which is just... Basically, instead of calling the police when something happens, people have uh, each other in a network. It's called Cell 411. I highly yeah. recommend everyone to use it. It's really mm -hmm. ideal if you're and in a metro in Brussels and all cell phone traffic is impossible and there is a, an, an well, incident uh, like today. Well, yeah. obviously, if there is no cell phone traffic, yeah, that's hard to use your cell phone. Yeah. But then it's also hard to call the police, you know. Um, yeah, but they were there today because that's a government but, institution. But, yeah, yeah, but, you know, civilians were also there. Like, did you follow the hashtag, um, you know, I can't recall what the hashtag was, but, like, stay at my place or something, you know. Civilians mm -hmm. who came out, offered help yep. to their peers, yeah. to completely course, unknown yeah. people. Mm -hmm. You know, I think peer-to-peer -peer networks is, uh, you know, going back also to the whole Seeds to Meet uh, event, you know, Ronald and the Seeds to Meet team, uh, are kind of attacking things from another angle, or from the kind of sharing economy angle. But we are very much the same from, from another way, right? We believe that people actually step up to the task and actually are willing to help each other, especially when there is a reputation system that matters in place um, as an incentive, right? But even without incentive, let's say we think humans time after time, especially in times of accidents, uh, natural catastrophes, you know, earthquakes, uh, terrorist attacks, etc. Time after time, it's not a couple of police officers that have been mind-bogglingly impressive. It's generally like the outpouring of civilian help, of just people helping people that's been moving, you know, hearts around the world. I agree so, with that. Yeah. 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 Um, we, we, we live now in, uh, in a world with a lot of nations. W w will there be more um, uh, uh, variations <laughs> of the bit nation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything we do is open source code, so anyone can fork okay. it and create their own nation. You can also create your own mini nation within bit nation. Yeah. And, you know, I, I believe we should live in a world with, you know, millions of nations, right? Uh, because it's kind of like the way I see it is 200 choices for or 210 choices for you know 7.2 billion people that's not a whole lot like think what if we only had 210 movies to watch right or 210 clothes brands or 210 beer brands whatever right why should everybody agree to so few options and why should they be so difficult to purchase to choose we believe that everybody should be able to choose whichever provider they want and if none can fit in, you know, then they can create their own and they can create it easily. Mm -hmm. And are, are there examples of the, because you say it's open source and the different forks of the, of the open source system, so, 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 so how, how many uh, variations of the, uh, uh, of the software or the, or the idea of BitNation are there? 
Um, I would say since uh, we started, maybe around five, ten different, maybe, but none, yeah. none. As I can see for now, none of them are very serious at the moment. Yeah. We are the only ones providing actual services. Um, but a lot of people are like really excited by the idea. Like I get people contacting me every day saying like, oh, I, uh, you know, I'm a vegan and I want to start a nation for vegans. Like, can you help me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's really cool, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, why not, right? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. I read something about uh, that, that you, uh, uh, we all know, at least our viewers, that Estonia started a really interesting e-citizen uh, project and that, that you with BitNation started providing uh, notary services through uh, their uh, e-citizen uh, system. Can you explain a little bit what it is, how it works? Yeah, I think the government of Estonia is really forward-looking, right? So they yeah. are radically innovative for being a nation-state. Um, so yeah, albeit I don't like nation states, they are really a shining example of yeah. something. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah. You always need the example to, right, have, to yeah, have the rule. Right, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there are others as well, but yeah, yeah. that's another. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think, you know, they are a very small nation state. They, have, they don't have a lot of land or a lot of populations, right? So they have... I think because of that, largely, they have come to compete on a global level through offering governance services to citizens worldwide in the same way we do, but we are not a nation state, obviously. So I think in a kind of post-nation state society, governments like Estonia are the only ones who will survive, basically, or city-states like Singapore or Dubai or whatever. So we got together and brainstormed and I said, like, well, one thing we can do for you is we can create a public notary, and your citizens, uh, e-residents, can use it for free and uh, with your own ID system, right? And our citizens, BitNation citizens as well, of course. So yeah, so we built it and launched it. People got married and, and, on and, it and yeah, yeah. birth certificates. <laughs> so it works? Yeah, yeah, you can try it out yeah. right now if you want to. Okay. It takes like two minutes. So I did this workshop today, right? And. I asked people in the audience, so I was like, when was the last time you notarized something? How long did it take? How much did it cost? And they said, like, well, it took, you know, three, four weeks, and it cost me a couple of hundreds of euros. And then I showed them, you know, how to do it live, and it took, like, you know, less than two minutes, costing zero. And they were like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really very disruptive, you know. <coughs> yeah, so, 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 so what is your, your goal with the BitNation? Um, my goal is to make nation states relevant through providing a better and cheaper and uh, more time efficient service. And in that way, increase personal sovereignty, personal liberty, get rid of borders and uh, geographical apartheid, and you know, just create a freer and happier world where individuals are empowered to make business with whoever they want in the way they want, right? Uh, do you think, uh, like for example, what we, what we see <coughs> happening now in, 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 in Europe uh, with, with uh, refugees, etc., mm -hmm. is it only uh, a government thing that they are, say, 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 say putting up the, the uh, say, say, making the, the borders more important again? Uh, in, in, in my uh, impression, uh, it's what a lot of people in countries like as well. So it seems like a lot of people are getting back to the to, 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 to the nation as the, the the place where they feel maybe safe for the uh, for, for the outside world. Yeah, but I think that's kind of a dying reaction pattern. It's like a counter reaction to the globalization trend. And when it comes to terrorism, I mean, I used to work for the US military before I became an anarchist for seven years, right? Uh, conducting social science research. Uh, a lot about why people became terrorists. And it was always the same stories. It was the perceived lack of financial and social mobility, right? That frustration. Like, for instance, Mohamed Bouzazi, who set himself on fire February 17th in Tunisia, uh, which kick-started the entire Arab Spring, right? He set himself on fire because he couldn't have his fruit ban because the government officials said, oh, you don't have this permit, you don't have that, blah, 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 you can't follow the regulations. So he just gave up and let himself up, right? And throughout, you know, North Africa and the Middle East and South Asia, etc., you can see this insane, inefficient bureaucracies just putting so much red scotch, you know, so people just 
can't start their own businesses, can't thrive, you know, financially or socially, right? And so I think that if if we like bypass these regulations through cryptography, amongst other uh, techno technologies, and we empower individuals to be sovereign, to do business across artificial borders and artificial regulations, you know, we, we offer them a completely different path, you know, to self-sovereignty, to financial, political, and social mobility. Mm. And I think that's going to decrease terrorism much quicker than closing borders, which will only, in the long run, increase terrorism. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, you know, very idealistic uh, uh, plan, do you, but very threatening, I think, I think to the traditional uh, uh, nation states. Do you meet a lot of opposition from that side? In, in what you do, or they just don't understand it. Probably it's also <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, yeah. So, sometimes, like nationalist, uh, far right extremists, uh, you know, try to have a go at me, but I did, just don't care, you know. Mm -hmm. I just block them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a possibility. Like, <laughs> 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 if you don't care, you don't yeah, care. Come yeah, come at me, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, you came to Holland to talk yeah. on our, a conference yesterday. The in, in seats to meet. Uh, that's right, yeah. Uh, how was the discussion after your talk? Uh, was there a lot of interaction about your ideas? Yeah, uh, I, I think, um, you know, a lot of people didn't realize how simple and available these tools are. So seeing someone like using it live, like registering as a world citizen or using the public notary, seeing like the ease of use of it, you know, made people think about it from a different perspective. You know, taking it from a kind of very abstract level to a like really concrete and simple yeah. and useful from the level, right? So, and that that was kind of the message I wanted to pass on as well. Um, so yeah, I think it was really good. It was fun to be able to demo stuff. You know, because yeah, um, very often I have the idea when, for example, talking about uh, the blockchain, that a lot of people believing in the blockchain having uh, a hard time explaining the blockchain yeah. to, to the rest of us. Uh, do they make it too, too difficult? Do they try too hard? Or cause do, do we know to, do you have to know all the technical stuff, et cetera, et cetera? Well, I think because there is a, a lot of internal disagreements in the community. Like, you know, there is this meme going around saying like, oh, the blockchain is a database. But, but that's like saying, you know, McDonald's is a restaurant, implying that all restaurants are McDonald's, you know, obviously it's, you know, it's a different concept. The blockchain is a lot of things. It's a, a consensus protocol. It's a public uh, ledger distributed amongst millions of computer. And yes, it's also a database, but that's yep. just one of the things, right? So I think trying to summarize all of that in a kind of a user-friendly, you know, elevator pitch is, is still challenging because even the community can't really get along on the definition, right? Yeah. So it's, I think it's like the HTTP protocol, you know, it took a long time before people started understanding it and even knowing how to describe it because, mm. you know, in a way you could say the blockchain was kind of an accidental technology, right? Yeah because it was created out of Bitcoin, but the, the goal was to create Bitcoin, and then it turned out like Bitcoin kind of, you know, more or less accidentally created like a, you know, completely new technology. Yeah. So the, 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 the blockchain is publicly available. Anybody can develop yeah, uh, anything if, on it. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, what is your source of income? Where do you live from? Because what you I, I, I'm asking myself the same question every day. <laughs> yeah, give us the answer, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, BitNation is in the kind of seed funding stage now, you know, we are just doing the traditional, uh, you know, startup thing in a way. Mm -hmm. But obviously, we're not a traditional startup because we're not a company, right? We're, yeah. Yeah. we're a decentralized That's what I mean. organization. Yes. Yeah. 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 You're decentralized, you don't yeah. have an official structure. <laughs> right. So what is your business model? Well, it's always interesting, you know, when I talk to investors and they are like, so where are you incorporated? And I'm like, on the blockchain. And they're like, but where are you incorporated? And I'm like, on the blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, so the model is basically, we take a small fee on transactions. So, um, it's kind of like Airbnb or whatever, you know? So for instance, if you timestamp a document on the blockchain, you have to pay a miner's fee. So that's how you communicate with the blockchain. And then we take a very small percentage on top of that. 
And then also, like, for instance, if you do a contract agreement, right, uh, like you selling your Honda to me, yeah. you know, and we pull in an arbitrator and he charges, let's say, $5 an hour, right, then we take a small fee on that transaction. So, yeah, it's basically transaction fees, which is a very scalable model. Yeah, it is. Okay, my last question, if, if you look at uh, our small, tiny little country here in the Netherlands, we're and you try to abandon the idea of uh, uh, not having any nation states at all, but think, try to think in maybe a gradual change. I don't know if it's possible for you. Do you have any advice for our government, you know, how to uh, deal with all those new developments? Yeah, I think there is great opportunity for the Netherlands. I mean, I think generally small countries uh, have a clear advantage because it's easier to do changes in the Netherlands. Like Estonia, what you mentioned. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Netherlands is already like technologically advanced and, you know, morally advanced, I think. Um, so I think because of the sea level issue here, you know, I think like a really interesting approach that the Netherlands government should focus on is like floating cities, right? That could really give them... Mm, they're a, talking about it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that would really give them a clear competitive edge in the post-nation state world, right? Because they could like... So, 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 yeah. so we can go everywhere then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can like franchise floating cities, right? You can be like the McDonald's of floating cities. <laughs> Yeah, floating Amsterdam, we're yeah. fed up in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. We float somewhere else. We float to France. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Good idea, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's one I like. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, great story. Yeah. Uh, Wish you good luck. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you for yeah. being here. Thanks a lot. Uh, jullie fun. bedankt voor het kijken. Uh, je weet, al die uitzendingen van ons die zijn terug te kijken via uh, YouTube en via fastmovingtargets.nl waar je de uitgewerkte versie later kunt teruglezen. We bedanken. En eventjes kijken. Bier en Co voor de lekkere biertjes. Streamzilla voor de stream die tot je kwam. 2ML voor de hosting. En wil je media over innovatie mogelijk maken, dan word je FMT member. En wij zijn er volgende week weer. Dag. Dag. Thank you for popping in. Yeah, that was fun. I yeah. really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah.